I'm Mark Frost, and you're listening to Twin Peaks Unwrapped. Welcome to Twin Peaks Unwrapped. I'm your host, Ben Durant. And I'm Brian Kazaska. And today is a very special day, Ben. Maybe this will be our last show. What do you think? We should just end it now. We I, just uh, drop the mic and be like, we're done. End it on a high note, high is note, what you're yes. saying? No, we're not, I don't think we're ending it. Um, <laughs> so on Friday, there was all this buzz on the internet, on the social media, that people were able to get the secret history of Twin Peaks, Mark Frost book, at Barnes & Noble early. Yeah, and I can really... Highly recommend seeking out Scott Ryan Scott uh, stories. Scott Ryan from the Red Room podcast. podcast. Yeah. And he does he an video. amazing video <laughs> yeah. about what he went through to get the book. So uh, I on Friday, I actually had to work late on Friday. I was getting out and it's like, well, maybe I, 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 there's two Barnes & Noble in my area. Maybe I can go there and find it. And so I texted you. No response from you. I go to the I had fir- VR on. You had VR on. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, he had PlayStation for VR. He was busy. Yeah, I yeah. went to the first one, nothing. Went to the second, noble, nothing. And it's like, and, oh, and nothing for nothing from Brian. Brian was a, <laughs> <laughs> I was in a different world. In a different world. I was I was on a mission by myself. So anyway, so I didn't get anything, and I I drove home, and there at my doorstep was a package. What was in that package? <laughs> the secret history of Twin Peaks. So it all worked it. out. Because yeah. can you imagine if you'd bought it all excited, and then you get home, and there's a package? I I yeah, I'll take as many books. <laughs> Flatiron Books was kind enough to give us review copies of the book. We both got a copy. Yes, that's super nice. That was so nice. Thank you so much, uh, Flatiron, for that. And why are we getting review copies? I don't know, Ben. (laughs) You tell me. Because we are lucky enough to be able to uh, get an interview with Mark Frost. (sighs) Yeah, it's big. I know. D- this could be the last show. I mean, we wh- could where, leave where do you go from here? Yeah. David Lynch himself. David Lynch himself. But that's, yeah. Who that's knows? a dream. So, yeah, I'm so excited we get to we get to talk to Mark about the new his new book. And maybe we'll ask him a few other Twin Peaks-related questions. Hello? Hi, Mark. This is Ben. Oh, hi, Ben. And so it's an honor to talk to you. And we, we just got done reading, or I just got done reading The Secret History of Twin Peaks over the weekend. And it's an excellent uh-huh. it's an excellent book. And it, I, I, for being somebody who's uh, been into Twin Peaks for over 25 years, I'm very satisfied with the book. You did an excellent job. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. So, Mark, in 1994, you mentioned on, in Wrapped in Plastic magazine about pro- being approached to do a novel which kind of talked about the geographical formation of the peaks. Did you go back to the 1990s notes in researching the book? I don't know that I actually had notes about it. I had a a bunch of ideas, Mm. but uh, nothing that I had written down. I mean, the ideas had stayed with me. I mean, that's what the idea of going back in history. I didn't go quite back as far as the, you know, a geologic age, but Mm. I went went back to the uh, kind of the opening of the Northwest as a starting point and the collision of the uh, Western moving European culture and the the native culture uh, that seemed to me to be in retrospect a good place to start yeah I really like the structure of your book it's like an epistolary uh, novel uh, how yes did, yeah w- um, why did you take that approach to telling the story I wanted the ability to tell the story in a bunch of different voices mm. Twin Peaks is uh, the story not just of one person or a few people it's the story of the town mm. and it seemed to me the the best way to accomplish that was to tell the story from this very subjective point of view, meaning somebody could tell their story, then somebody else could tell theirs. And mm. we, we have people commenting on the stories. And so it, it felt a little bit more like a mosaic, a historic mosaic that gave you a, a three-dimensional picture of the town that wasn't just, you know, place and 
and the people, but also the effect of time as a third mm. dimension to see how the town developed and what people contributed to it and, and so forth. That was the approach I decided on. Very interesting. And so we recently uh, interviewed Richard Saul Warman about the Access Guide, and he was interested in knowing if you were going to look at the Access Guide in preparing for this book. Did you go back to the Twin Peaks materials to help you put this book together? Yes, I did go back to the Access Guide because we had you know, created some of that geography and timeline in that book, so I felt it was wise to to build on that and use it as a you know a kind of stepping stone to this book. Hmm. Do you consider the secret diary of Laura Palmer, the Dale Cooper, My Life, My Tapes, the Access Guide, and uh, the Secret History of Twin Peaks, this all being canon? Well, I you know canon is never a word that I use. I mean, yeah. the universe of the town and the people and the stories seem to me broad enough to encompass anything that comes along. That's by one of the two primary creators. I mean, I have no trouble uh, thinking of those books as part of our ongoing development of this universe, and I, I thought the book should actually continue in that vein. Yeah. Mm. Can you share with us, how did this book come about? Did the, the, the new series idea come first and then the book, or how did that all come about? The new series came first, and then I realized I was so engaged in the, you know, the show running of the, the show the first time that I never really had a chance to explore the, the town as a novelist, and, mm. and in fact, my career as a novelist really started post Twin Peaks. Mm. So, so it's a chance to use a different skill set and a, a way of expressing myself that is actually my preferred medium now. So mm. I felt it was it was good timing in that regard, and I, I thought the approach to the material would yield some interesting results. You have historical figures. I learned some new stuff about uh, like like Lewis that I didn't really know about his death, and actually right today that his family are still trying to get get the body to find out whether it was a suicide or not. In in researching this, did you learn new things histor about historical figures? Absolutely. You know, I mean, I've done this before in fiction. I don't know if you've read The List of Seven, which I was have. my first book. But Great book. Um, even in the golf books I wrote, which were nonfiction, they were set in their historical context to try mm. to give you a, a very strong sense of time and place. So I really love that technique, and I think it's a great way to embed a story in a in a more real time and place mm. and bring your world into the real world to some extent yeah. and get some kind of a Venn diagram going there where, uh, you know, it seems like they overlap. Yeah. I can see that. Yep. Were you involved with the the Secret History of Twin Peaks audiobook? Yes, I was. Uh, I was very involved with the casting and had a lot of good close talks with the wonderful producer director Laura Wilson at, hmm. at Macmillan Audio, who put the whole thing together. But I, yeah, I would say I wanted as many of the original actors as I could get to to voice their roles themselves, and they hmm. were they were all really happy to do it, which I was thrilled at. And then I wanted to draw largely from this wonderful pool of actors who appear in the, the upcoming show, hmm. uh, not playing those parts, but just because they're they're great actors as, as part of a sort of rep company that helps populate this world. And it was uh, really a pleasure to have all of them on board. It was it was a fun homecoming, you know, for everybody. And um, it was from the old show, and it was also a way to kind of welcome in some of the new people. Very nice. So I was curious to know, did David Lynch have any ideas about the book? I mean, this is your book, but I wondered if David had anything to say about it or add to it. No, nothing, right. nothing at all. He said, look, this is your baby. You run with it. Uh, he was a little preoccupied <laughs> with taking the show. <laughs> you know, that's what I do. I mean, as a novelist, mm. you're used to working on your own time and on your own motivation. So I just uh, took the ball and ran with it. Yeah, and you're a great writer. I do love The List of Seven, and it's a really great book. Would you ever be interested in writing another Twin Peaks book? Well, well, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it's received. We'll see how it does. We'll see how, how the series does. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I would say I'm leaving that door wide open. Cool. Can we ask you some cl classic Twin Peaks questions? Uh, as long as, yeah, as long as we don't stray over into stuff about the new series. Sure. No, we won't. You had mentioned in the past that the origins of Laura Palmer came from uh, you growing up with a girl being murdered in the area where your family had a summer home. Friend of the show, Mark Givens, um, had done some research over a weekend and came up with this idea that maybe it was Hazel Drew who grew up in the early 1900s around Troy, New York. I wondered if his, I wondered if you would know his research was right and if you had any other information about this mysterious story. Uh, Hazel Drew was murdered about, I'd say, less than two miles from the, the lake where I 
Houston, where I grew up and where I spent every summer mm. uh, growing up. And so my and my grandmother knew that story intimately. Mm. And the the pond where she supposedly, where I guess where her body was found by the side of the pond, uh, was allegedly haunted. And mm. she and and her sister, my great aunt, had a great story about going down there one night and thought they heard a ghost moaning and mm. and wailing and it, it turned out that the next day they discovered that a, a cow had gotten stuck in the fence <laughs> oh, and that's funny and was and was sort of a lowing for help you oh. know? But, um and the cow i'm happy to report survived the ordeal that's good it was was rescued the next day oh. so there was that mythologically weighed on me and then uh, when i was about 13 a family friend of a, a, a family that the father worked with my dad Hmm. Their oldest daughter was was murdered. Oh. Um, she was about Laura's age. She was at a private school in in um, I think in uh, Central California. So uh, we lived through that tragedy. And uh, oh. her younger brother was one of my closest friends at the time. And um, so that was that was an indelible experience that also I think figured into the the Twin Peaks history as well. Wow. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that with us. You mentioned your dad. Um, one of my favorite deleted scenes from Firewalk With Me was your dad doing this magic trick and talking to Laura about the angels will come back. It was it was a beautiful scene, and I, I, he, he acted it so well. It was really impressive. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good scene. And I think the, uh, the deleted scenes really helped round out the, the vision of Firewalk With Me in a, in a way that the original wasn't quite able to do because it had to be shorter for its uh, runtime. I thought that the deleted scenes were a great addition. You did a wonderful job of bringing in stu material from Firewalk With Me and Twin Peaks and kind of really putting it together in this book. I thought I was really impressed with how you did that. Well, thank you. We've got kind of a it's more than a map now. It's really mm. a chronology and a history and a mythology. And the the more layers and the more, like I used the word mosaic earlier, the more tiles you put in the mosaic, the richer and more lifelike the mosaic becomes. Mm. So I think all of these things help contribute to this world and the universe that, you know, so many people seem to enjoy taking a visit to. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. So here's probably my geekiest question I have. This is a good one. <laughs> this, is a geek well, this is pretty geeky. In, in episode 12, Lucy gets this phone call from someone who refuses to identify who he is or she is. And in that same week, there's a commercial for the 1-900 number sheriff station hotlines. Was this secretly a product placement for the hotline? You know, I have absolutely zero <laughs> recollection of that. Yeah. Wow. So I, I, it might have been at the time, I, but I... Sure. If, if it was, it's it somehow flipped into the sands of time. Yeah, it's pretty obscure. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, one of the ideas in season two was really about overcoming fears, and I hope you don't mind us talking about that. Uh, you um, almost had a near death experience where you kind of share about it helped you kind of overcome a lot of the fears in your life. Did the, your own experience did it help influence how you shaped Twin Peaks in season two? Not specifically. Um, I think it was a it was an experience that you know gave me a lot of very intense fear, but then consequently kind of lifted the fear away and uh, i mean there, there might have been elements in uh in the storytelling that emerged from that but nothing nothing really consciously oh yeah because i feel like for season two there's a lot of like cooper dealing with fear when he got yeah. shot and then the fear and love opened the door and a lot of that that i yeah i could really draw into so yeah. interesting yeah they're probably i mean they're probably as i think about it now there probably is it is informed to some degree by by that experience, no question. Mm. Can you share with us the story of how you brought back uh, Twin Peaks? I mean, it seems like you are the one that had the idea uh, that's, hey, it's 25 years later. I wondered if you could share a little bit about that. Um, I can't because it's it, to do so would would um, kind of maybe talk about season three. So oh, sure. I, I, I sorry, I sort of have to draw the curtain across that. One. Oh, of course, no, that's I fine. Yeah. I, this might be another it's a, question. But it's a nice, it's, it's a, it's a nice big red curtain. Yeah, you'll be familiar <laughs> with it. I like that. It's been, tw it's probably been about twenty-five years since you've worked with Lynch. I wondered what it's like working with him again after all these years. Uh, well, the writing process was um, was very enjoyable, and it mm. took a long time. And again, I can't say too much about it sure. without giving stuff away. But you know, it was it was a uh, a very positive experience. Yeah. And I think about I think you've shared in the past it was like you would sit at the keyboard and write and 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 David would sit next to you and I think the quote is something like you throw ideas up and see where it landed together and I I was just curious if that's still true today. I would say that David hasn't learned to type. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> or at least not, not as fast as I can. There so. you go. Next summer will be the 25th anniversary of On the Air TV show. Any chance of the series uh, becoming available on HD format? That's a good question, and I know it's been talked about, and I, I haven't had a recent update on what the status is. So if, if, if I hear anything about it, I will pass it along or you know make it available on a tweet. I'm really impressed with Twin Peaks in that sometimes it, it was kind of ahead of its time in many different ways. One way, I thought, was how it dealt with uh, transgendered issues. I mean, having uh, Denise Dennis, and I, I thought all the Twin Peaks characters respected this character, and, and I was—I really, don't know—I was just—I guess I wanted to share that with you that I was impressed with how you guys handled transgendered issues. I guess, yeah. Looking back, it was kind of groundbreaking. We didn't try to make too big a deal about it. We just—we had a character who, who had these concerns and these experiences, and we just put them out there. Or I can't recall having seen it prior to that on, no, on a network television show, all. certainly. Yeah, yeah. So what do, you, what do you hope people get out of this book? Like, what do you hope the fans think of the book? Well, I think that's, uh, I never try to kind of direct people toward what I think their hmm. reaction should be. Yeah. To me, a, a, a book is a, it's a sort of gift you leave by the side of the road, and it's up to the person, the passerby, who picks it up and has a look to decide what it is and what they get from it. Hmm. Um, my my hope would be that it that it gives you a a read that is an experience that in its own right uh, stands alone, but one that also enriches and and deepens your appreciation and um, knowledge of this world that um, so many people seem to like to visit. Yeah, yeah, Thank definitely. You. So we'll be in New York on uh, Thursday. Thursday. So yeah, you'll be. Uh, oh great! Yes, well, we're looking yeah, forward to definitely seeing come by and say hi. Oh, oh, yeah, we're going to be... be we'll we're, probably come early. Yeah, we'll be at Barnes & Noble the whole day, <laughs> waiting. Great, uh, great, just camp out. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, we have a lot of, of our friends um, in the community that we've made over the year that we're all going to be meeting them for the first time. Yep, there. You, oh, you're, great. You're, a big you're, event. Blast. Yeah, you're yeah. our beacon. <laughs> that. Well, I, I'm... I, I'm I'm always happy to think that I'm bringing people together. You, are. <laughs> you truly Aww. are. You truly are. Well, it really is an honor. I mean, I've been a fan since the beginning, and you've done so much for for the community, and I'm just so impressed with this book, and, and I thank you so much. Well, it's my pleasure to talk with you, and uh, it'll be fun to meet you on Thursday. So we just got off the phone with Mark Frost. What an amazing gentleman. What a nice guy. Nice guy. Thank you, Flatiron Books, for setting that up for us and for getting us a review copies of the book. And a big thank you to Mark Frost for giving us the time today. And Ben, as the fan for this long, you this is like a childhood dream. It is a true. childhood dream. It's it's crazy. I'm a, a little freaking out today, but uh, it's it's pretty exciting. It and really is something. You asked some really good questions, and I think the community is just going to love it. And if you want Mark Frost, we got the word. That uh, Brad Dukes, he's on Brad Dukes' show today yeah, as well. Yeah, so after you listen to us, go to the Brad Dukes show and check yeah. him out. And so, you know, it's it's available now. The Secret History of Twin Peaks is out now. So anybody who doesn't have it, go to the stores and get it. It's on book. It's on digital. It's on audio, which I want to hear so badly. Yes, we got to get that. If you have any questions for us, you can send them to TwinPeaksUnwrapped at gmail.com. We're on Facebook next week. We're going to have some more surprises and more Mark Frost month. We'll continue next week. We're going to have Christian, Brad Dukes, and some Joel. And maybe some surprises in there. Maybe we'll save one Mark Frost question for next week. I think we should. Yes. Thanks again to Silencio. You can find both their albums on iTunes and Apple Music, CD Baby, Amazon, and more. We're out of here. We'll be back next week. David, it's not just because it was the woods and it was interesting. It was because you make beautiful, beautiful work. You know, and that's and just you tell stop great stories. One, <laughs> stop one second. Mark Frost and I, you know, did that. Mm -hmm. And Mark Frost is at least 50% of it. Mm -hmm. And I loved working with Mark. And um, we had a thing going, complimenting one another, and the thing would flow. And uh, so it was a very special experience.